Hello everyone, this is Jim Lucy, Editor-in-Chief for Electrical Wholesaling and Electrical Marketing with the January 25th edition of the Today's Electrical Economy podcast sponsored by Champion Fiberglass. The company began producing epoxy fiberglass conduit fittings in 1988 and in 1989 developed the first conduit from epoxy resins that had flame resistance and low smoke characteristics. This met the most stringent codes and specifications. In today's broadcast, we'll take a look at some key weekly economic indicators that will give you a sense where the electrical economy may be headed in the coming weeks. We'll also be checking out the largest construction projects now underway or breaking ground in early 2021 and check in on some important year-end data for the construction industry. Let's first look at some weekly economic indicators that can offer a better sense of where the market may be headed and when and where any economic turn for the better may be occurring. These five weekly indicators are initial unemployment claims at the state level, rail freight car traffic, the Baker Hughes recount, oil prices, and copper prices. Our thanks again to Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring today's electrical economy in 2021. We had a terrific response to the presentations last year, and we're delighted to be working with Champion Fiberglass to deliver them to you again this year. Let's first take a look at unemployment claims at the state level. The weekly unemployment data from the U.S. Department of Labor and the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics highlights the states with the most unemployment claims. This data is valuable to electrical distributors, manufacturers, and reps because it offers empirical evidence of just how big an issue layoffs are now at the local level. On a more positive note, when these claims start declining and establish a trend in this direction, it will be a clue for you about when the economy in a certain state will be starting to improve. For the week ending January the 16th, the advanced figure for seasonally adjusted initial claims was 900,000. It is a decrease of 26,000 from the previous week's revised level, but it's obviously still astronomically high. The previous week's level was revised down by 39,000 from 965,000 to 926,000. The four-week moving average was 848,000, an increase of 23,500 from the previous week's revised average. That previous week's average was revised by 9,750 from 834,250 to 824,500. The five states with the most unemployment claims were California with 123,970 advanced claims, a decrease of 58,655 claims, Illinois with 108,892 claims, an increase of 13,948 advanced claims, Kansas with 65,513 advanced claims, a decrease of 2,810 claims. New York was also in the top five with 60,909 claims, which was a decrease of over 12,000 claims, and Texas with 50,832 claims, a decrease of 13,890 advanced claims. The other states in the top 10 when ranked by the most advanced claims were Ohio, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Arizona. One of my favorite leading indicators for the overall U.S. economy is freight rail traffic because it's a measure of the amount of raw materials and finished goods being shipped by rail. The best source for this data is the American Association of Railroads, or AAR. It publishes this data weekly. For the week ending January 16th, total U.S. weekly rail traffic was 500,028, 547 carloads and intermodal units. That's up 5.8% compared with the same week last year. Total carloads for this week were 232,550 carloads, which is down 2% compared with the same week in 2020. U.S. weekly intermodal volume was 295,997 containers and trailers, while which was up 12.8% compared with 2020. The AAR data also gives you a sense of which commodity groups are showing the biggest increases when compared to the same week last year. The biggest gainers year over year were grain, was up 47%, Metallic orders and metals up 9.9%, and farm products excluding grain and food, which was up 7.8%. If you track the oil market, you might be familiar with the Baker Hughes rig count, which tracks the oil and gas rigs that are operating. The data is available by state, basin, and nationally every week at the bakerhughes.com website. This slide gives you an idea of the largest oil and gas deposits. It gives you a good sense of just how many of the large oil plays are in Texas and Oklahoma and how big an area the Marcellus gas region is, which covers Pennsylvania, Ohio, and parts of West Virginia. The Baker Hughes rig count is quietly starting to show some increases, but it's still drastically behind last year's pace. The total oil rig count 
is 378 this week, which was up five rigs from the week before. It's still, however, down 416 rigs from last year for a 53% decline. The nation's largest oil basin, the Permian Basin in Texas, lost one rig from the previous week and is down 217 rigs from last year for a 54% decline. This region accounts for 49% of all active drilling rigs. Since September, the price per barrel of the benchmark West Texas Intermediate Oil has been showing some steady increases. This morning, it was sitting at over $53 a barrel, which is up 34% since September. That is a welcome increase after almost 10 months in the $40 per barrel range, but oil prices still have a long way to get to a price where drillers make money. That reportedly varies by region, but a good rule of thumb is about $60 a barrel. Economists like to call copper pricing Dr. Copper because it's a leading indicator for future economic activity. That's because it's used in so many industries with the construction industry among the market leaders because of its use in wire and cable and copper plumbing pipe. Copper prices had another good week and they are still one of the most bullish economic indicators in the electrical market. Spot copper prices appear to be settling in at the $3.60 per pound range. Now let's take a look at some 2020 year-end data for some of the most important segments of the construction market. Uh, this chart shows a, a report by the National Association of Home Builders and Wells Fargo in their Builder Confidence Index. NHB said, single family permits, a useful indicator of future economic and construction activity, was 7.8% higher at 1.23 million units annual pace in December compared to November. They have registered a 30.4% gain compared to a year ago. This is in line with the current level of the NHB Wells Fargo Housing Market Index, which held builder confidence in the market for newly built single family homes at a solid level of 83 points in January, which is a little bit off of the high of 90 points in November. The overall construction market did not perform as well as the housing market in 2020. According to Dodge Data and Analytics for the full year, total construction starts fell 10% to 766.3 billion. Non-residential building starts saw the steepest drop, losing 24%, while non-building starts fell 14%. Richard Branch, the chief economist for Dodge Data and Analytics, said in his analysis, the roller coaster year of 2020 is over, but not forgotten. The scars from the pandemic and recession will be long lasting and result in significant declines across most construction sectors last year. Single family housing, warehouse, and highway and bridge starts were bright spots that cannot be understated for their gains. However, there will be difficult months ahead for the economy and for the construction starts as COVID-19 cases mount. But, however, the continued rollout of vaccines means 2021 will be a better year. While well, Dodge does not expect big gains in the overall construction market for 2021, some project types and regions of the country definitely are showing some increased activity, as you can see in the chart on this page. Folks in the Washington Metro's electrical construction industry have got to be excited about all the $4 billion in mixed-use construction that will be going on in and around the Amazon HQ2 project near Reagan Airport, or the billion dollars in work estimated to take place in the nearby Potomac Yard project. The Potomac Yard project will include a new satellite campus for Virginia Tech. Up in New York, the massive Hudson Yards project on Manhattan's west side was historic, and the construction of thousands of years of luxury condos is slowing down. However, the renovation of the Penn State Rail Terminal and the construction at LaGuardia Airport continues. Um, in particular, I'm looking forward to seeing that Penn Station Rail Terminal uh, renovation. They're going to be using the uh, Federal Post Office just behind Madison Square Garden, and it, it's going to be a showpiece project, which I think is going to be quite beautiful. In New York, you also have the billion dollar office tower that broke ground in Madison Avenue in November and the upcoming JFK renovation project, which was going to be massive. Elsewhere in the country, there will also be some airport expansion projects in Pittsburgh and Atlanta, a $2 billion single-family and mixed-use project in Dallas for the Elevon development by NA Partners, and work that has begun for a $600 million ammonia plant in Texas City, Texas. For regular project updates, please subscribe to Electrical Marketing Newsletter. It's a bargain for only $99 per year. Thanks for listening today. And a special thanks to the folks from Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring today's Electrical Economy podcast series in 2021. Please contact me if there's any other type of economic data you would like us to cover in these podcasts. Our next presentation will be on Monday, February the 8th.